Hey everybody, Felix here from InventBox, where the solution is right around the corner. In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at something called cereal. And no, not the type of cereal that you eat, but rather cereal as a method of communication between electronic devices. Basically, cereal means it sends one bit after another in sequence. One bit, one bit, one bit, one bit. Of course, it does it extremely quickly. So serial comes from the word series, one right after another, as opposed to sending everything all at once in parallel. Practically speaking, the Arduino board just uses serial to communicate with other devices. You can have the Arduino send information to your computer, and you can also send information from your computer to the Arduino. Serial is not limited to the USB cable though. It is actually configured by default to send things over the USB, but the Arduino will use these two pins here, zero and one, which are labeled as RX and TX. If you want to read up more about how serial actually works, the Arduino uses a protocol called UART, spelled like this. And just the concept is that it uses one line to transmit data, that's the TX, and then one line to receive data, which is the R. And what the Arduino does is it sends all of your data that you s send and receive with the serial library, all of it goes through the RX and TX pins, but then it also sends it through this FTDI chip here, which translates it into USB. And that allows it to also interface directly with your computer, which is super convenient. And I'll show you how to interface that way. So the Arduino software has this thing called the serial monitor, which you can get to in the tools. And we see a couple things here. One, there's a text box with send. This lets us send information to the Arduino that's plugged in over the USB cable. Then we also, down at the bottom, see Every time we send a command, do we want to put something at the end of it? And these are, are your different options. You can put a new line or nothing. I usually leave mine on no line ending. And then we see a baud rate over here. The baud rate is just how fast the values on the RX and TX pins are changing. A faster baud rate means the data gets transmitted faster, but of course is more error prone. 115200 is a pretty good standard baud rate. So that's what I have mine set to right now. And then in order to open up a communication between two devices, we have to let them both know what baud rate we're using. So on the Arduino side of things, we do that with the serial module and the begin command, and we give it the baud rate. So now the Arduino and the computer will be synced up to the same speed, and that way there won't be any errors in transmission. If you have different speeds, then you might end up reading all kinds of crazy data that isn't actually what you sent. And using the rest of the serial library is extremely easy. They've done all of the heavy lifting for us. We don't even have to worry about what pins we're using because they just have everything auto-correlate between the pins and the USB. In order to send information from the Arduino to the serial device, we can use the serial.print or println. 
The only difference with these is that when we print something, so we give it a string or some sort of value, like a variable. Um, for example, we could give it LED pin. When I print out LED pin, we'll upload and run this and pull up our serial monitor here. You'll see it's giving us this value 13 and it's it's just printing it all on the same line, one right after another. That's what print does. It sends it across serial to the computer or whatever whatever other device you have. If I do print LN and we run this again, you'll see that it inserts a new line character at the end. And so they don't all get bunched together. So that's an important thing to recognize when you're sending and receiving data. And then uh, we can, so one of the biggest features that we can use this for is for debugging our code. Say I'm not quite sure what's happening with a certain variable, it's something's not behaving quite properly, and I wanna know what the value is. Well, I could put that variable into a serial print statement and have it send the value back to the computer so I can actually look at what's happening while the Arduino is running. Maybe I want to digital read something. And here we'll digital read LED pin after we've set it high and low, maybe just to make sure that it's doing that. And so we'll see about every half second, it prints out high and low for that pin. So it is behaving exactly how we want. If something were crazy here, it might help us deduce what exactly our problem is. And of course, I mentioned that you can also send information to the Arduino using serial. And when information has been sent from here or another source, you can read it on the Arduino using serial.read. Now, I want to show you exactly uh, how this works because it might be a little bit misleading at first. So to do that, let's feed it into a print statement so that we get it back at the computer so we can look at exactly what the value is. We'll just make a string called input and assign this value so we can look at it. Serial.println. And I want to know that the input, I want to know the value of it. And here's a little nice feature you can do. If you put a, a string, a piece of text in here, you can actually add another string to it. See the input is a string type. So we can add a string to it and it'll print it all out together. So let's look at this and see what our input value is. Minus one, always. And what if I send some value? Okay, it was a 103, but I typed a letter and it gave me a number. Okay, well, what if I type a bunch of things? We get some numbers, multiple numbers, and then it goes back to negative one. So what is happening? Well, serial.read reads one byte at a time. And since there were multiple letters that we sent, AKA multiple bytes, it just did one every time until it ran out and then it went back to minus one, which means there wasn't anything. Those numbers are the numeric encoding of the letters that we sent, which could be useful if we knew all of those, but maybe we just wanted the Arduino to receive a command like on or off to turn something on and off. Well, 
if you want the Arduino to to actually treat what is sent as text as a string, then we can use the read string function. And now if we load this, we will see the value that you would expect. So our input is blank right now. And if I send a command like on, then sure enough, now input is actually the whole string on. And whatever we put in here, all gets chained together. It's smart enough to know it all goes together. So this is super useful for sending commands, like I said. And if you wanted to do a command, you might say, you know, if input is equal to on, then, I don't know, turn something on. And if something, if the input is off, then turn something off. So there you have the basics about serial. It's just, in a nutshell, transmitting and receiving data between devices one bit at a time. And like we said, the Arduino has the serial linked up between the RX and TX UART pins and the USB, which ends up being super convenient for us. And uh, the Arduino commonly uses UART to communicate with all kinds of devices. You can buy sensors and, and other things that'll have serial lines and you can hook them up here to let the Arduino communicate with them. So in summary, you can use serial to send and receive commands uh, between the Arduino and the computer. You can use it to debug your code to figure out what values some of your variables have to make sure everything's working. And uh, you can uh, use it to connect to other devices to control them. If you have any other further questions about how the serial works, uh, let me know and I'll answer those in the comments.